Well, welcome to Sports Vibe TV, uh, the unmistakable figure of Mr. John Smith. It's uh, November, it's bleak, uh, he could be on the beach right now in the South African summer, but instead here he is with a, a rather suspect ginger moustache appearing, and you're, you're Saracen. How has this happened? Well, I'm not a Saracen yet, hopefully that'll be on the weekend, um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't think I had a, a, another chapter in me, uh, it was probably... If you'd asked me a year ago, I would have said to you, it's probably you know, going to be sort of the end of the line after a World Cup and sort of go peacefully into the real world and try and find a real job. And uh, you know, it was an amazing opportunity where as I, you know, I got a, a chance, a call from Ed Griffiths you know, to see whether I would be interested. And at, at first I was you know, quite sort of, you know, I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it because we settled in Durban, the kids are at school, the wife's got a job. And um, once the more I thought about it, the more, the more more information I found out about Saracens, you know, it, it made me realise that it could be a great opportunity just to play rugby again, just to you know enjoy the game again. You know, you know from where I've come, I've been had a pretty big responsibility in terms of captaining the side and being responsible, sort of do or die every single weekend to bring in the results. And you know, uh, whereas here I, I thought my role, you know, playing at a club where I wouldn't have to captain, I wouldn't have to start every weekend, just do my bit every single day of training, you know, get involved in the weekends and. That was just a huge, huge like, bonus for me. Good. We better just clear up the moustache, by the way. I, I'm assuming, I'm hoping, uh, this is for Movember. It is. I've been getting scot free, getting, getting off scot free the last couple of years with the excuse of being on the end of year tour and being over here and doing all these interviews, like I'm doing now, I suppose, and that you know, I couldn't look like an idiot. And now everyone knows why I was making that excuse because I've got a ginger moustache and it's, it's in terrible shape at the moment. So I'm hoping the next. Uh, 20 odd days is going to bring it into some kind of format so it's it's hard it's irritating I, it can't i can't stop wanting to see, shave it off but this is what we do did you know you were ginger a latent ginger because you, you're i on... was proper ginger from the start i was i think if i can recall some of my nicknames as youngster were oros uh you know fanta you know okay. duracell all those yeah, yeah, beautiful yeah. names so, copper knob so mm, belisha beacon had that one we didn't get, we didn't get those but, okay uh, now uh a little known fact, at least I didn't know this, uh, you were passionate and probably still are about tennis. Yes. And in your first um, dream, if you like, was actually not to be what you've become, but actually to be what? I'm thinking from a South African point of view, the next Kevin Cohen perhaps? Uh, Kevin Cohen, absolutely. He was uh, uh, probably the, the best and most famous tennis player outside of Wayne Ferreira. Um, and yes, that, but my dream was to be at Wimbledon one day and win it. And I used to cry every single time Evan Lendl got knocked out. Oh, he was your, he was your he, hero, was he? He was my guy. You know, yeah? And, you know, I'd, I'd now, why is that, John? Because, you know, you are, without characterising, you, you are a South African, you know, who no doubt played a lot of rugby at school, and I, I would have thought, like nearly every other South African, uh, your heroes would have been you know, the Pinars of the world, or these guys. Well, I, you must remember, when I was passionate about tennis, I was, you know, that was from the age of six till the age of sort of 10, 11, 12. Okay. And, uh, you know, once I, and I, when I was 12, I moved into a really Af Afrikaans city and there was only one English school and I asked them sort of where the tennis courts were and they said, we don't have tennis courts, we've got rugby fields. And, uh, you know, I was, I was sort of guided into rugby at the age of 12. Um, tennis then became less and less of a priority because of what rugby means in the country. Uh, I, and to be honest, I was passionate about tennis and I practiced every day. Were you I, any good? It was okay. I yeah. went to tournaments and I travelled around. My mother used to sort of take me to tournaments. And I'd, oh, it's pretty yeah. serious. Though. So, uh, but the bigger I got, the, le the, the, the less effective I became from a results point of view. So, and then, uh, to be fair, once I started playing in a team sport, I got a lot more enjoyment out of it. You know, when you've mm. got to rely on others and be, be mm. relied upon, I got a lot more enjoy enjoyment out of that. And I suppose it's easy to say that now because you look at my physique, I don't know if I would have quite uh, killed it at all. Just between us. Do you reckon you're the best tennis player here at Saracen? So he could be, couldn't you? Uh, they all, they all fancy themselves at something here, the first singing, thing I guitar. Was the tennis courts and uh, okay. So I've been trying to you know, eyeing out. No one's really put their hand up at, uh, for tennis. Uh, Ed Griffiths rates himself a little bit, but right. it's very difficult to play the boss. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's he might like, have to throw you know, a few points. Six nil, six nil, six one is not going to go down well. No. <laughs> now, John, it's it's gone pretty well, hasn't it? I mean, I I, I remember meeting you in two thousand and three at the World Cup, and uh, obviously that was a great loss in the quarter final. But four years later, you you win it, and then you follow that up with a um, uh, there, there's some some other South African trying to get into the trying to get the shot there, Mr. Scott Britt. Um and then you, you you also beat the Lions as well. So I mean, if you're a South African rugby player, captain in the Springboks. Um, uh, uh, 83 times, I believe, which is a record. 111 caps, 
and he beat the Lions as well. And, and you know, as you know, uh, 12 years previously, you lost to the Lions, so the country was waiting for a long, long time. I mean, you, it couldn't have gone any better, could it, really? I, well, I, I, can, I can be really blessed with what, what, I, what I've been able to achieve with the guys around me. And, and in the era that I've played, I've been lucky enough to play in, a, in an area where we've, we've had some really good players. The team that's been, been here for the last couple of years has done some incredible things. And, you know, you always think about those games you lost. But you know, I, I don't like to have that attitude. You know, I really have been able to play in some great games, win some unbelievable games and some series. Mm. You know, the, the Lions series was, was a special moment. I think that was the one thing that kept us alive, really, post 2007, was that the sort of that 12-year wait that some of us uh, had had experienced. You know, 12 years. I was fortunate to play as an 18-year-old against the Lions for the Sharks in in 97. In 97, did you? So uh, yeah. it was. A dream, did, you, did you lose that game? We lost that game okay, against yeah. the Sharks. Yeah, and uh, it was a, a dream, really, just to be able to do it again 12 years later and uh, to be that blessed and be able to play for that long is uh, you know, I'm truly grateful for that. Okay, well you're now living here in, in, in England, are you enjoying yourself? I mean obviously you come over here a lot but you've never actually lived here before. No. What, have you, uh, what have you discovered? What are the things you're missing? Well, what every, are the things you like? Everyone always talks about the weather and for me it's been unbelievable because I always only come here during the end of year tour of the UK and Europe. And it's November, December, so the weather's always bad when I come here. So I got here. The first week was blue sky, sunshine. Um, it's you know it's certainly still pleasant now. Um, what I enjoy is the fact that it's uh, it's, a, it's a far simpler and basic life for me as a person compared to what I have back home. You know, to be able to walk down the streets is is a, a privilege that I don't often get. So you know, to be part of a team that is successful already and is quite driven and hard working means that I get to fall into an environment where you know I'm back into working hard uh, and getting a, a chance to play rugby for a, for a little bit longer. Final word about the World Cup, I guess. Um, quarter final this time. Um, as you know, you, you sort of we, we want if it was if it was a boxing match, you won every round and got knocked out in, in in the last round. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's the points that that matter. He lost to Australia, but it was as always margin very very fine. Yeah, that's what World Cups can can be like, and uh, the margin's always small. Um, you know, we had our opportunities in that game, even with you know the amount of position and territory that we had and the dominance we had. You know, we. We passed that ball forward. We knocked on in front of the balls. We missed the drop kick. You know, we had those opportunities to, to close that game out. You know, the last penalty was our own fault that put them in the lead. And um, you have to look at it like that. You have to have perspective. You know, when you've won some, when you've won games where you were down and out and you sort of pulled it out of the darkness, you know, you always tap yourself on the back. And when you lose those games, you know, you've you got to just grin and bear it and hopefully move on. So, you know, it's it was a hard game to lose. You know, we lost in the quarter final in 2003 was to be expected. We didn't deserve to go any further. Um, but it was harder to lose in this quarterfinal because I really, we felt as a team, we were gathering momentum. You know, we'd taken so many risks the two years prior to the World Cup that they were now starting to slowly fall into place and we just missed it by a margin and never got to see what might have been. Well, listen, best of luck here, here in England. Uh, good luck with the uh, ginger moustache. Just, just, you know, dig deep and, you know, look people back in the eye and say you're ginger and you're proud. Tough it out. Tough it out. Good luck with the uh, Saracens tennis tournament. Uh, you're, you're my favourite now, already. <laughs> I'm just worried I haven't played in a long time, so I'm going to have to... Well, you've taught the game, so... <laughs> I've taught myself <laughs> big time. Hopefully none of my teammates see this interview. <laughs> oh, oh, they will. <laughs> Cheers, then. Cheers, thank you.